and that's most companies. Okay? If if someone comes to you with a problem, which they will, if you're the boss, and you say, well, what do you think we should do about it? And they'll say, I don't know. <laughs> Didn't know you was going to ask me that question. What do you want to do about it? No. Tell you what. Why don't you go out, get with a couple of you people out in the same department, and come up with the answer and come back and tell me what you think you should do. A couple of days later, they come back and say, well, okay, what do you think we should do? And they give you the answer. What answer do you think they gave you? I the don't they, know. Huh? I don't know. No, they give you the answer that they think you would make. Okay? They still don't believe that you're the same person, all right? So they give you an answer. You say, well, is that the real answer or is that what you think I want you to say? And you'll say, well, it's really what we think you want us to say. Go back again and do the same thing and come back and give me the answer to the question of what you think you should do. That question alone will start with several of the words you said. It starts to empower your people. It starts to involve them, all right? And then they come to the end with the issue and you say, what do we think we should do? They would come in and say, Joe, we've got this problem. We've researched it. Here's what we think. We've got two options. Here's what we think we should do. Let me run them both by you. Get your input. And the boss looks at it real quick and says, hmm, ask a couple questions. That looks good. Go do it. Right? That's what a good leader is. Not, it's all about me. Right? Comments or questions? Before we go too far? Uh, the same, I witnessed when my boss, the manager, uh, she shared with me the experience and told me that when I co come into the room of my boss, the director, the logistics director, I, I'm not coming with a problem. Right. I'm coming with a solution. solution. Okay. But it takes a strong leader to admit that you're important enough that you can make that decision and not me. Okay? It's all about ego. Really. It's all about ego. All right, next slide. Three questions I love to ask people, whether it's got anything to do with the subject we're talking about or not. All right? Do you, do you, do you trust? Me? Can I trust you? Okay. Do you care about me? And will you be there for me when I need you? If you, as a leader, can't say a solid yes to each one of those, if you can't say a solid yes that your people think that about you, you have not you do not have a foundation which upon which to build success, all right? It goes back to the golden rule. Do to others what you have want done to you. When we first started coming to Ukraine, we would have sessions at night and one of the subjects that we would have was can you be successful in business and be ethical? And you can imagine the, the discussion that went on in that room. We back that was seven, eight years, nine years ago, and we were still a lot of the mafia and things that you know much more than what we hear today. All right. And we had trouble getting an answer on that because no one could agree what was right and what was wrong. We'd say, well, how do you determine right from wrong? Well, one would say the Koran, the other one would say the Bible, which is what, where I believe God's errant. Word, okay. Others would say what my professors told me. Others would say what my parents told me. Is, and, and we couldn't get agreement. And then we said, if you don't want it done to you, it's wrong. And the example we used was the employees were taking money certain months when they had to pay off people, were taking money from the employee's salary. Short pay. Is that still happening today anywhere? I hope not. But anyway, you understand what I'm saying. And my question was, and they come out and said, well, that's okay. So my question was, you're the boss, and you cut your salary, people's salaries this week because you've got to pay somebody else. Did you cut your own salary? No. Well, why not? Well, if you don't want it done to you, then it's wrong. You buy that definition? Okay? So it's a good way of asking the question. Is it right or is it wrong? Do you want it done to you? But that's back when you go to your people. If you're going to be successful and ethical, you can be. All right? I know it's some rough waters in there, but you can be successful and you can be ethical. And if you're working for a company that's not ethical and that's bothering you, then 
you need to make a decision as to whether you can find employment in another place where you don't have to face that every day. If that's what your values tell you you couldn't be, I'd have trouble living, working in a place, okay? With my values, I'd have trouble working there, so I would find me another place to work. I wouldn't go quit tomorrow and leave my family without food on the table, but I would start searching and finding something if it was working against me, right? But a good leader, your people shouldn't have to face that problem because you should be treating them. What does this mean? Can you read it from back there? D W Y S Y W D S Y. What, what does that say? Do say you, you're close. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do what you say you will do. When you say you will do. Okay. That is that not what it, you know? If you want to build trust, you better do what you say you'll do when you said you would do it. <laughs> Little things mean a lot. Next slide. Go, somebody comment? All right. How does one become a leader? One minute drill. How does one become a leader? Word. Word. No, just born a leader. <laughs> oh, born? Yeah. Oh, born leader. Many. Okay. Well, there'll be many that will agree with you. I'm not saying I will or won't yet. What are you going with? Learn. Okay, you can develop that skill. Okay. I'm in contact with people who are around the Right, okay. Right, okay. Somebody else. Today we've had a meeting. we had absolutely authoritative way. This is the man. He <laughs> will be leader from tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They, they, they call them leaders, but they're not leaders. Okay? No, he will be. Yeah, he, he, will. Appoint, he was appointed. Well, I understand. <laughs> Uh, from the inside, right? he needs to his values. Okay, values, okay. Right. I'm going to go back to him just for a second. We said a while ago that a leader is one that if no one is following is taking a walk by themselves. That person that just got appointed will find out they're taking a walk by themselves. The people will go because they may be told to go, but they won't go because they want to go. Therefore, they're not going to be very good employees. Let's see. Let's see, okay? Yeah. Sure, if you want to be a leader, go for it. Okay, so you got to decide if you want to be one, if you do, go for it. Okay? Anybody else before we flip over on the next slide? I say innate ability, which is born. I think some people are just born with those skills, okay? but not every skill they need, but they're born with skills that sure make it easier in the future, okay? Developed by observation. I worked in a company for seven years. Good people don't work for bad people. I worked for a bad person for seven years. <laughs> Personal issues, okay? I'd moved my family several times. There were some family issues we needed to stay place. I put up with hell for seven years, excuse me for that language, but that's what it was, okay? I put up with it for seven years for my family, but I'll tell you what, the passion you see and a lot of what I am today came from seeing how demoralizing it was to work for a Pharisee, okay? A person you, you know, anyway, I won't go through this. And I made the determination, when I get a chance to run a company, I will do everything opposite that he did. <laughs> All right? I developed a lot of my skills from observing how bad it is, okay? All right? And, and I think that's very important. All right? Proper tr treating of people. This is my little note, just to say, if you're one who does this, you treat people with respect, humility, the character is important, you build relationships, uh, you encourage others, you involve them. If that just happens to be your nature, then you've got a head start on leadership. I'm a believer. It comes from the heart. Right? And you need to be consistent. So I don't think it's born. I don't think it's totally all developed. I think it's, it's, it's a process. And some people can get there pretty quick and other people don't will never get there and don't need to. 
Everybody can't be a leader in the good work, okay? They may go home and be a leader in their neighborhood or at school with their kids or something else, but, you know, we all need to be in our place wherever it needs to be. Um, my faith drives most of these for me, okay? My faith drives most of my values that I have developed when it comes to scripture leadership, all right? Um, next slide. Why is being a good leader hard? Because sometimes it's hard to combine brain and heart. Oh, that's a good answer. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get. It's not hard to do what your heart wants to do. Yeah. If your mind tells you otherwise. You understand that? That's, that's good. Good thing. Right? Somebody else. Why is it hard to do? Or is it hard? You think it's hard to do? If, it, if you were born with those skills, then it's not very hard. You can be a leader. The question is, how good a leader can you be? All right? I, I, I help people run a little organization called Crossroads at, at our church. We help people who are unemployed uh, find jobs, uh, help them write their resume, learn how to think. And everybody gives me their resume and it lists responsibilities. I'm not going to hire you because you were responsible for something. I'm going to hire you because you were responsible and did it well. Okay? You agree? Mm -hmm. So I say your resume doesn't tell me anything. I want to know how well you did it. So the comment I make to them is, i got a 12-year-old grandson that can manage a $3 million business. And they look at me like, I don't know if I want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> You're crazy. And then I say, but I don't know how well they run that business. All right? So the question would be, it's, forgot my point. <laughs> the question would be, it's, you can be a leader fairly easy. The question is, are you an effective leader? Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. uh, now let's look and see what we got for being a good leader. It requires trust. I say it's hard because it requires trust. And I think trust is very difficult in today's society. Mm -hmm. And that's because, why is that, Fred? Because everybody's up for themselves. And most of us will do most anything we can to get ahead at the expense of somebody else. Are you yawning? Am I boring? Or are you just a, a, a <laughs> Huh? You agree with that statement? Huh? Yeah. yeah. We're all too interested in ourselves, all right? I say it's hard because well, it's almost the same thing. It's all about me. If leadership, is, if, if it's all about you, you will not be a good leader, okay? You may get great results in your company for a period of time, but over a long period of time, you will, you will fail. All right? It's hard for a manager or a leader to admit they're the problem. I will use the statement, it's not the employees that we have a problem with. It's the manager. All right? And most managers won't agree with that. All right? They were good people when we hired them six months ago, weren't they? Well, what happened to them? Probably because we didn't build a culture that was caring, respectful, and they became bad employees because they didn't, their heart wasn't in it. I've learned there's no such thing as a mediocre employee. I think you just got to put them in the right position, in the right environment. All right? Now, there's some lazy people out there. The Bible says if you're lazy, then you should, you're not going to eat, and that's okay. If they're lazy, let them, let them not eat, okay? But when it comes down to it, if we as the leaders have built the right environment, then most of the people that we have working for us will be good employees. Mm -hmm. All right? uh, it means living by the golden rule, which is hard. So all of those pretty much say the same thing. It's hard to swallow your ego and to let other people get credit for what they do and do those things. Comments on that before we move forward? Okay, next slide, sir. Culture. Leadership is hard because we do not understand the culture that we determine determines the actions of the employees. All right? And I think it's the next, flip real quick to the next slide. Yeah, it's this one. Are you as a leader responsible for motivation of your employees? Well, of course. You say yes, of course. 